Good morning. <clears throat> so, I know it's been a really long time since I've done a chat. It's been a minute since I've been on Facebook or on social media in general. Um, I've been taking a social media fast. And, you know, pretty much just getting in alignment with my relationship with the Father God. And it's been worth it. It's been worth it to get away from all the different kinds of energies and opinions. Because, just a quick side note about social media there is one person, right? So we'll take me for example. There's me. And then I have an Instagram account and I have a Twitter account and I have a Facebook account and I have a Twitch account and I have a YouTube account. That's five different places where I'm expanding or uh, sharing my different opinions. And it's just a lot. So when you think about when you spend time on each of these, you're getting that I don't understand why my cat has to do this right now. My cat is trying to get into the closet. Girl, get on that body here because you're doing too much. Go, go, go on. She's doing too much. Um, sorry. That was, un I don't know if you could hear that, but that was like too much just now. <laughs> but it's like you have all of these different, like, you get on Facebook and then that one person is, is giving all their opinions. And then you get on another app and there's that one person again, but they're giving different energy because it's Instagram. And then you get over here. It's just like, oh, it's just a lot, right? Really fast. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you come into this place. Holy Spirit, come and fill this vessel, fill this place, fill this live. Um, please let it be more of thee and less of me. Make sure that the message I'm trying to give across comes across clean and clear. Um, it's been a really long time since I've given a live, and I just want to make sure that everything I'm sharing is of you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Okay, so I'm going to take my time because the way that my lives work, most people, I be trying to like rush and share like things like while people are on are on but I realized like most of the time most of the views don't come until I've posted it so a lot of people don't even catch it live but I'm gonna tell you all right so if you don't know uh, I rededicated my life back to Christ in February mm, this iced coffee is so good y'all I dedicated my life back to Christ or rededicated my life back to Christ so I grew up in the church and when I got to college I kind of went off and did my own thing but I rededicated my life back to Christ in um, February and this was after I had a really scary experience and I realized that as I continue this walk I'm gonna have to continue to give this testimony and I'm going to have to continue to share certain things about this moment in my life just so people can understand, you know, why it is that I'm so passionate about serving our Lord and Savior. Um, okay. Also, this, you probably don't care, but I do. I had a pimple and then it like popped overnight. <laughs> Oh yeah, I need to drink more water. Okay, so, okay. Yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine and she was like, you know, I'm not as passionate as you. I, I'm not that as passionate as you. And I realized a lot of people are not as passionate as me. Um, and this was actually the second conversation that I had yesterday where I felt like I was kind of coming across, coming across kind of like, Ah. <laughs> because when I hear people talk about what they can't do or when they talk about people 
that say what they can't do when it comes to following Christ, I just be like, no, <laughs> you are more free following Christ than you are doing anything else. And as somebody who was bold enough to do other things, like, worship other deities i'm here to tell you like you are more free you are free indeed and so i get really like <laughs> it's like mr Krabs. <laughs> and so i get really um i get really passionate i get really like filled with the spirit when i start and i don't really want to say it's filled with the spirit because We'll talk about the fruits of the spirit in a minute. I'm going to really take my time with this. Um, but I just get filled with uh, indignation, like a righteous indignation. I get upset. And I want to talk to you about why I get upset. <laughs> or why I get, or why it seems that I am so passionate. Or why I, um, why I get so passionate. Or why I feel, or why I come across so passionately. So, I would probably say since about 2015, I have, I spent those years, I was, okay, so from, I would say from about 2015 until about January of this year, I spent all of those years piecemealing together my own religion, okay? Um, taking from this and taking from that. Um, a religion that I felt would connect me to God, but will also make me feel comfortable where I would not have to elevate. I would not have to hold any accountability where I would not have to be responsible or really just hold any accountability in any way, shape or form. Like I wouldn't have to I wouldn't have to change. I would not have to elevate. I could stay the same and be comfortable for where I am for myself. And I could be comfortable for where I am for the other people that I was interacting with. I could be content in this, this like, okay, so like God has called me to be here okay but i but creating my own religion kept me here and i'm comfortable here and so a lot of times i i, I don't really want to project this onto other people but i do want to make sure that i am speaking from my perspective which i feel a lot of people this is a perspective a lot of people hold and so i i picked from here you know a little bit of a little bit of one global consciousness and I picked from here a little bit of hoodoo and I picked from here a little bit of worshiping deities and I picked from here and I picked just enough of each of these things that would combine and make me feel comfortable enough and still make me feel like I was worshiping God which lowercase g I've come to find out is not God is the God of this world which is we're not going there today but it's not the one true living God. It is not the father of Jesus Christ. He's not our father God. But I felt like, okay, I pieced the meal together just enough to make me feel comfortable to continue to behave in the way that I want to behave. That would continue to allow me to um, fornicate. That would allow me to continue to drink, smoke, um, because, you know, God intended us to be free and have free will and do what we want to do. And that's how I was living. Okay. And to be completely honest with you, living this way had me here, there, here, there. And people would never probably want to tell me to my face, but I can be honest about it. I was here, there, here, there, ideas here, then leave that idea, go to another idea and do this idea and leave and uh, just everywhere. 
and it was like I felt like it was me right I felt like I had the God in me and so I was able to dictate how things should be so I can take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that piecemeal it together okay and so I was living this way until January of this year. I'm not going to go through the whole spiritual attack that I experienced that let me know that, okay, you were, you were taking from the universe. You were doing rituals to the full moon, to the new moon. You were um, worshiping deities. You were doing all of those things, and now I'm here to show you that it sounds cute and it sounds cool, and it was like a it was it was a false light because those are there are spirits attached to those things. And in January, I was shown just how real um, that is because a lot of times you know, we get a false light or we get a false rise or we get a false like adrenaline rush and we're like, yes, this feels good, this feels great and then we are left having to replenish by, um, by performing a full moon ritual. We are left having to replenish by performing a new moon ritual, by doing these really hideous things so I just want to make sure I'm like making this as clear as possible so just go then <laughs> so in January I was shown that you're really messing with some stuff that you shouldn't be messing with. You're really messing with some spirits, okay? You're really messing with some stuff, and it's not what you think. It's not good stuff. And the spiritual attack had me, like, embarrass myself. I can laugh about it today because I spent a lot of weeks crying about it. And I have no shame, you know, because the Lord was definitely at play. And I share a testimony. One day, I can't wait to preach on that, like, preach on Leviticus 26 and Matthew 25 in terms of my spiritual attack. Um, but I embarrass myself in front of people. I embarrass myself in front of somebody like I like as a really good friend and I really care about him that was embarrassing um I mean I embarrassed myself and this spiritual attack landed me in a um, mental institution for six days back in January so this is when we get to how why I'm so passionate and why I go so hard, okay? This is, this is, boom, this is it. So, <laughs> and I'm get, I'm laughing, I'm in joy because, like, the, the Lord Almighty is sovereign and he can turn any situation around. So I try not to concern myself with what people will say or think or if they have heard about my situation or if they heard about the girl that was naked running through floods in there. I'm trying not to concern myself with those things because it's kind of like, you know, the Lord God Almighty pulled me out of that and also gave me a testimony and word to go with it. Like I was literally living the word of God. Like I was, I was a piece of the Bible come to fruition like <laughs> it's crazy okay so I went to I was staying at the uh, behavioral health unit for six days and I want you to know that that 
little comfortable religion that I created that had a little bit of hoodoo, that had a little bit of universe manifestation, that had a little bit of deities, Oshun, Shango, Oya, that had a little bit of all of that that I just pieced me all together. So that wasn't there for me during those times. The only deity that showed up for me when I was in this mental health unit for six days by myself without a phone because they take your phone when you go in. My family and friends didn't know where I was, so and I wasn't calling them. I, I could call them, but I didn't want to. Like at that time, I felt like there was something in me, and that's something I'm gonna tell you anytime you be like, something told me, or there was something in me, that's God. And so there was something in me that was like, no, it's me and you now. Okay. So I was in this mental health unit for six days. No phone, no family, no friends, no social media. And when I needed to call on something, the only deity that showed itself to me was Jesus. I didn't feel any energy from global consciousness, one love. I didn't feel none of that. Well, Shun didn't show up in my room and tell me, oh, let me rub your hair. You're beautiful. There were no little things hanging around the hospital where I could put them together and hoodoo my way out of it. There was no, oh, universe, I'm going to manifest my way out of it. No. When it, when it came down to it, the only thing that presented itself to me in the spiritual and then in the physical to the point that I couldn't deny it was the Father God himself. And I'm going to tell you what happened inside of the mental institution and the physical that made me be like, okay, God, <laughs> you're real. Wow. Wow. I'm going to tell you two things. Actually, many things happened where I just could not deny the presence of God and that God is real and that there's only one living God and you know and that Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life I mean I can't it's to the point where where my beliefs could not refute that truth anymore I just I couldn't even if I wanted to because who doesn't want to live by the flesh who doesn't want to do what they want to do see who they want to see have sex with who they want to have sex with drink what they want to drink Smoke what they want to smoke, eat what they want to eat. Who doesn't want to do that? But when you see what that is attached to, oh, baby. It's nothing to just realign and get back with the Father God. So, okay, let me tell you. So, I prayed. Like, so the first night I got in there and I shared. Um, I'll come back a little bit later and put the link to the um, when I started documenting. But I didn't document until maybe like three days before I left. So I'm telling you some stuff that, you know, I didn't document, I didn't write, I didn't share online. Because I do share some of the notes that I wrote to myself. But like, so on the first night, I'm like, on the first night, I'm in there trying to make sense of it. Like, what was that? And so I'm, I'm trying these different things. Like I'm trying um, to call out to different deities. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to call out to my ancestors. Like, you know, I'm trying to manifest my way. Like I can get out of it. Like I'm doing, I'm literally, my, my mindset, my ideologies are snapping at that point. All that I was believing was, was snapping. That's why I, I try to encourage people. It is so much easier for you to just be like, you know what? I know the truth. Let me just realign. Father God, help me. Then to have something like that come into your life and just decimate your whole entire belief to the point where you feel like you're crazy. Okay? So the first night, I'm like, the first night, I'm like, yo, like, 
I'm trying these things. I'm trying to manifest my way out. I'm trying to call on different deities. I'm trying, thinking to myself, what do they have in a hospital? Maybe I can do a spell, a ritual. Yeah, I'm trying to do all of those things. And then eventually I'm like, yo, but I trust you, God. Like, And this was something that I was saying the night of that crazy attack I kept saying I trust you God and in that moment I remembered that I was saying those things like I kept saying I trust you God I trust you God and so I asked God I was like I prayed I was like yo like show me that you're real because right now I say I trust you but I'm I'm leaning to these other things and I'm doing it so rapidly like show me just show me that you're real show me that you're real show me that you're here with me like I'm begging God right and so I go to sleep and I wake up the next morning and there's a patient there that's nonverbal. Excuse me. There's a patient that's that's there that's nonverbal and he writes on cups, right? He just like writes on cups. And I noticed that something told me to take and like I said, anytime that I say something, understand that that's the Holy Spirit leading me to do that thing. And so something tells me to, you know, something tells me, like, pay attention to that man that's writing on these cups, right? And so I do. I pay attention. I'm like, hmm, okay. I noticed that. But I'm still scared. I'm still like, what is going on? Why am I here? How am I going to get out? Like, what, like, what is this? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm petrified, really. I'm like, what is this, right? And so I spend the rest of that day like really nervous and really afraid, like thinking like this is now my life. I'm going to be a crazy person <laughs> living in a mental institution. I'm never going to go back into reality. My mental has snapped. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, I'm crazy, you know, mind you, I don't have a history of bipolar. I don't have a history of schizophrenia. I I don't have a history of any of those things, but I feel like, okay, my mental has snapped to the point now where I'm never, that's it, I'm done. Like, this is now my life. This is, this is it. This is me. I'm going to be living this life, right? So, I spend the rest of the day kind of like tripping out about that, like really freaked out about that. And I go to sleep and I pray again. I'm like, yo, like you're not showing me anything. And then this is when the Lord is like, you know. <laughs> and you often want to know how does the Lord speak to you? It's your voice. It's your consciousness. That's why I tell you we don't have a global consciousness. We have because everyone does not believe. Everyone is not a believer. Everyone does not believe that Jesus Christ is God is one of God in three persons and and died on the cross for our sins right there are other people that have consciousness that are speaking to them and it is straight evil it is straight Satan and then there are people that have consciousness that are speaking to them and that's God sometimes a voice can be really 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 tiny and sometimes a voice is really loud and you know you, you like something was like no you, you went and you believed it right so I pray and um, I get up the next morning and something, God, something goes, you know, at lunch because you get three meals a day. Mmm, good. <laughs> the food wasn't that bad, y'all. I ain't even gonna hold you up. But something was like, go and sit beside that guy that writes on the cups. There's gonna be a message for you. And I said, okay so I go and I sit <clears throat> I sit beside and the, and the funny thing is he he would normally sit in a certain area where someone couldn't sit beside him but this particular day during lunch he was seated in a space where I could go and sit right beside him and so I sat right beside him and as soon as I sat down y'all he had the styrofoam cup sitting on the table 
and he twisted the star styrofoam cup so that I could see where he had written a message. And when he started twisting, I looked down at the message and it said, show me the image of a king's man saved. I was like, and he just kind of looked at me and I looked at him and I said, okay. Okay, God. Okay. And I just kept looking at it and I just wanted to, I wanted to take a picture of it. I wanted to just keep it. I wanted to capture it and keep it forever. Like, that was the first time. In retrospect, that was not the first time, but that was the first time that I was cognizant of the fact that the Lord does speak to us in the physical as well as in the um, spiritual. And I said, you told me this morning that you would speak to me. You told me that you would speak to me. You told me where to go. You told me what to look at. And it says, show me the image of a king's man saved. And I couldn't deny. I could At that point, it was that moment where I dropped all of it. I dropped all of the deities. I dropped all of the manifestation. I dropped all of it. And I went into my room and I was crying and asking for forgiveness and in full repentance, like, Lord, please forgive me. I just had no idea. I let what other people said about Christianity tear me away from you. And I'm just in prayer and I'm just like, you know, thank you for never leaving me. Thank you for showing me your, how, that you're real. Thank you. Thank, and I'm just like in massive prayer. like, And that was the second day. So I'm just like, you know, continue to show me how to hear you. Continue to show me how to feel you and how to know that you are real. How to know that, how to know your voice. How to hear your voice, right? How to really know that it's you. I, I'm done with all of that stuff. I'm done with believing what I want to believe. I'm like, I'm done with it. I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm done. Like, I was just like, I'm done, Father God. I'm done with all of that. Just teach me how to be your daughter. Teach me how to follow my big brother, Jesus. I don't want to do, and I made it very clear, I don't want to do what religion taught me to do because it was a religion that pushed me away in the first place teach me how to have a relationship with you teach me how to do this do this because I've never in my entire life had an experience like this teach me Lord and so I'm going to share another time because it happened many times like I prayed and I asked the father and then he would show up in the physical. I would pray in the spiritual and he would show up in the physical. So then another time, he told me that there was a woman there and her name was Penelope. And so I woke up one night in the middle of the night, y'all. I woke up in the middle of the night, which you can do like, because people are going through things like you can get up in the middle of the night, you can go and get water, you can go use the bathroom, you can go and speak to a nurse if you need to, whatever the case may be. Um, but the, there's the nurse's station and there's one hall. The hall that I was on were, was the hall for people that like had that were going to be in there for a while. And then the hall, you could see the other hall across from the nurse's station. And this is where you would go if you're getting ready to get out. And so I was, I woke up in the middle of the night and the Lord said, you know, there's a woman named Penelope. And so I got up, <laughs> I got up, I walked to the nurse's station and there was a nurse right there and there was a woman beside the nurse. And I said, Penelope? And I looked at the lady that was the patient it wasn't the nurse, it was the patient. I said, Penelope? Like that. And the woman said, who 
who her? You want to speak to her? I said, Penelope. She's Penelope. And I sounded so crazy. <laughs> Because I literally just walked, because my room was right in front of the nurse's station. So I literally just opened the door. I walked up to the nurse's station and I'm like, Penelope, Penelope. And the nurse is like, you want to speak to Penelope? This is Penelope. I said, Penelope? She's like, yeah, this is her. I was like. And that was, I just. I said, no, I just wanted to know if that was Penelope. And I know that that sounds so crazy, but it was because I was, the Lord spoke to me and was showing up in, in so many different ways in that, in that place to let me know, like, I'm always with you. I'm always here for you. Don't ever doubt that I'm not here for you. Don't ever think that you're crazy. Know that I am here for me, for you. And so... Many things like that happened um, and following his voice, I was able to get myself back on track and I was able to go home within six days. Um, also following his voice, I was able to help other people go home during that time. So I think there was about six or seven people that I interacted with and I was able to help them go home through things that the Lord was telling me, like, you know, tell them that they are allowed to get printouts of the medicine that they are taking. Um, tell them that they are allowed, tell them to review their patient rights. Um, let them know that they are allowed to get a copy of their patient rights, as well as a copy of the medicine and the side effects. Like, I don't know these things, right? Like God was like, study, like one night he, he tells me, study the patient rights. And so I study the patient rights and I get up the next morning and I'm talking to a woman that feels like she's not being treated right. And immediately God is like, remember what I told you? And I'm like, oh my God. And so I start sharing with her what I learned about the patient's rights. And in the patient rights, it says that you can have a copy of your patient rights. And I tell her, go and get a copy of your patient rights on there. It lets you know everything that you can do and you can have, including having access to the type of medicine that they are giving you and the side effects. I mean, I was breaking so many barriers, yo, and I just could not believe it. And God is like, do you see who and what I am now? Do you see my character now? And so I was like, I do. And so once I got out, I was just like going hard, y'all. Like, and this is why I go so hard. And this is why I'm so passionate because when I was in there, it wasn't deities that helped me. It wasn't manifestation that helped me. It wasn't the universe that helped me. It was literally God, the father, God, the son, and the Holy spirit. And as I've, I've been going through a pruning um, process, um, breaking strongholds, like watching my language, like the cursing, um, I don't smoke weed anymore. I don't drink anymore. I do sip on some wine when I'm like in a, in a, um, out with my, my dad and my stepmom and we're having dinner. I'll probably have a glass of wine or two, but I don't buy it. I don't. And the thing is, it's not even to make it seem like, oh, I'm better than you. I don't have the desire to. I asked the Lord to take it from me because I wanted to purify my body. I wanted to purify my soul and my spirit and my mind. I really want, like, I want, like, because I understand what it means to live of the flesh. And I've lived of the flesh. I've lived of wanting to do what I wanted to do so long and saw how it led me nowhere. Literally led me into a brick wall where my mind snapped. And I had to be quiet and sit and figure out what, who the Lord is, really, who the Lord Almighty really is. I was like, okay, now that I know that I want to live of the Spirit, I want to live of the Holy Spirit, which is our advantage, you all, which is our comforter, which the which Jesus Christ left here for us. Um, I want to read something from you, for you in Romans really fast. And then I want to say something to you about the fruit of the Spirit. And then I'm going to wrap this up, okay? So understand, like, this is why I'm so passionate. And there, and I'm still being pruned. 
um, because there are promises that the Lord has bestowed upon me. And for instance, I want so bad to be a mother. And even when I found out, you know, I had fibroids, the doctor said, okay, you have fibroids, but they're, they're not by your uterus. You will be able to have a baby, but I still got so sad about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what if I'm not? What if it's hard? And the Lord came upon me and said, that is not your portion. You, you are a mother, but there are things that you have to prove within yourself to be exemplary of the, of the type of mother and woman of God that I need you to be, right? And so I'm being pruned in so many ways. I'm being pruned to be the mother for my children. I am being pruned to be a wife for my husband. Um, I'm being pruned as an entrepreneur, even like as we speak, like, and this, and that whole thing, me becoming an entrepreneur, that's crazy to me. Like, even now, like when I go to work every day, I'm like, yo, these are the stepping stones. I can't believe, but it's who God called me to be. Right. And so there are so many things, including letting go of expectations that people who have known me for years have had of me. I have to let that go too. Like I can't be that to those people anymore. Like I can't be the way that, well, I've known Tanisha for years and you, you don't know her now. And even sometimes it's hard for me to look in the mirror and be like, well, this is who you are now. Like keep it here. Cause this is who you are keep it here keep it here like in the here now it's like up here <laughs> it's not here anymore it's like keep it here this is who you are now we're going to continue to elevate the more that you move forward okay so i want to read something to you really quick romans 8 verse 5 through 8 those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires so as i told you in the beginning of this live um I was set on creating a religion that made me comfortable, that would make me, um, that would make me, that would allow me to continue to be of the flesh and blood, that would allow me to continue to be low, that would allow me to, you know, still fornicate, still drink, still smoke, still party like crazy and just, and don't get it twisted. I still have fun. But it's in moderation, you know what I'm saying? I don't need to do those things. Maturity. Of course, I can do them, but I don't want to do them. I don't need to do them, right? Okay. So those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. And I'm going to get to the fruits of the spirit because that's what we're talking about. When we talk about spirit, when you see the word spirit, in the word, they're talking about the Holy Spirit. So the Father God sits in heaven. He is set apart. He is holy. At the right hand of the throne, we have Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand of the throne. He is right next to Father God. You know, God's so happy to have him back, okay? And when Jesus Christ ascended, he left us the Holy Spirit. God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so we have access to the Holy Spirit as believers, okay? So, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. And so in another video, I'll be sharing it later, um, that documents my social media fast. I share how I had to die essentially i literally had to die i had to give up tanisha in order to let in the holy spirit i had to give up my soul give up my flesh my blood and let in the spirit um because at that point i was dead i was done like <laughs> i was done the minute that i was like the minute that my flesh had me running naked outdoors i was done like that was that. That was that. That was that. <laughs> okay. You're done. You need to go. You, you're you done. You're done. You're done. <laughs> okay. Um, But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And coming from someone who has tried everything, I am here to tell y'all, I have never experienced 
so much freedom, so much peace, so much love, and so much joy than having a clear mind, so not doing drugs and not doing and not getting drunk, and a clear spirit, a clear heart by letting the Holy Spirit in. I've never and there are some things like I've had to distance myself away from people. Not that I think that I'm better than them. It's just that I needed to get in alignment with who I am so that when I do hang out with them again, it's, it's just clear. Like, I don't think I'm better than you. This is just the life that I have to live now, you know? And so, um, this, and I don't feel restricted. I feel free. I feel like I can do anything now that I am not bound to buying a dime bag and rolling up. My day is not bound to getting a drink. My day is not bound to finding someone to fornicate with. My day is not bound to those things anymore. My day is bound to living. My day is, I'm like, what's next, God? What do you have for me? What's what's next on the, on the masterpiece? What is the next move like? And even when things don't go my way, because don't get it twisted, I'm going to be sharing my, like, documenting some of the days that were really difficult for me during my social media fast. And there were days where I was broken all the way down, like, hurting, crying, like, why is this happening to me, Lord? Why would you let something bad happen to me? And you need to learn how to count it all on joy. Because, like, this is me after all those horrible things were happening to me just two weeks ago. How am I smiling like this? Because I know that even those moments are pruning me to be the mother to my children, to be a wife, a, a woman of God, to my community, to my family. And I'm still working on my family. Like, <laughs> still working on my family. But, you know. Okay. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. So when I sat up here and I created all those things, that was so, that was so disrespectful to my Father God that created the universe for me to be in. He's like, really, sis? So you're going to use the moon and the sun that I created for you to live, not for you to create rituals to, but for you to, you're going to use what I created for you to live. You're going to use those to create a ritual so that you can have what you want, so that you can honor your flesh and blood and not me. Oh, okay. I'm going to let you go ahead on and do that. And let's see what happens once you continue to do that. And the spirits were unleashed and not in a good way. Okay. So, um, and so the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. And so we do things that are so disrespectful to our Father God that placed us here. Father God literally created the universe and created the sun and created the moon. Like, it's only fair that we, like, give it up. You know what I mean? Um, it does not submit to God's law, nor can, can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And I'm going to tell you how you know if people are living by the spirit of the God. And it's because they have the fruits of the spirit. And I'm going to share that in a minute. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even through your body, is, even though, I'm sorry, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Understand that we are working with the same God. God has not changed, we have. We are working with the same God. This is the same God, y'all. This is the same God who brought Moses through the Red Sea. This is the same God who told Noah to create the ark and then let the waters unleash. This is the same God who allowed Sarah to give birth at the age of 99. This is the same God that 
had his son Jesus Christ rise from the dead. This is the same God. He hasn't changed. So know that you can do great things and know that this is real, okay? And so that spirit, that spirit that had Jesus ascend, we have access to that. That's the Holy Spirit, you all. Like, ugh, makes me feel really good. So let me read the fruits of the spirit. And this is how you know people that are of the spirit, okay? Now, everybody's not going to go hard like I do and be, you know, because everybody didn't experience what I did. I don't think anybody would purposely go and put themselves in a mental institution for six days just so they can get closer to the God. I didn't do, I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose, okay? But that was how God needed me in order to, like, continue to elevate past where I was. Because if I didn't give it up, if I didn't give it up, if I didn't give it up in that moment, I, who knows where my mind would be right now. I probably would not be doing this with you right now. So the fruits of the Spirit, this is how you know that you are living by the Spirit. I'm going to back it up, actually, so that you understand that you, you may think think that you are living of the spirit but you're not if you are exhibiting any of those any of these things okay i'm gonna read it <laughs> the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality okay and you see a lot of that rampant throughout i'm not even here to judge anybody but sexual immorality is like the top the top like thing to let you know that people are not living by the spirit y'all mm. it's like number one like oh i mean it's uh, <laughs> yeah um the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity debauchery idolatry and witchcraft so notice it's idolatry and witchcraft which means idolatry is not just having idols but it's anything that you replace your like jesus christ is our love light and peace and freedom that's period anything that you use to replace jesus christ for your love light peace and freedom is i is idolizing so if you are universe manifest crystal and you replace that with Jesus Christ, that's idolatry, okay? If you've replaced your relationship, like your relationship with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, if you've replaced that to have love, light, and peace, that's idolatry, okay? At the center of your love, light, peace, and freedom needs to be uh, Christ, needs to be God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, which is why I tell people all the time, like, say what you want to say about me, but I live a God-centered life, like, period, okay? Um, so idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. So understand that living of the flesh means that you're so bound to the racism. And I'm not, that's another conversation for another day. I'm not going to get into racism like that deep. But if you continue to let hatred, I don't care if you're black or white. I don't care what color that you are or what you identify as. If you continue to let hatred run through your body, then you are not living by the fruit of the spirit. You're not. And that was something that the Lord had to break in my, out of my mind too. The anger that I had about racism. It's true. I had to break that too. Okay. Because whether you want to believe it or not, God does not say all the black people get to go to heaven and all the white people have to go to hell. That's not how that works. You don't have your flesh and your blood when you go to judgment day. Okay, you understand that? So imagine trying to explain to the Lord, to our Father God, that you partook in racism in any shape, way, shape, or form, that you partook in racism because you were black and you're standing there in the spirit. 
Guys gonna be like, what are you talking about? What is black? What did I tell you about that flesh and blood? What did I tell you about that? <laughs> okay. So hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. And that was one that I also is really was on me too, because y'all know I, I got that road rage. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> because one day the Lord came upon me and was like, so imagine if your baby was in the backseat. And I was like, oh. right you want to be a mother right so you got to quit that out you got to stop that road rage and so okay fits of rage selfish ambition dissensions factions and envy drunkenness orgies and the like so many more i warn you as i did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, there's always a but. And there's always a but God. And that's why it's so beautiful because no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, but God. So just know, like, even if this is hard for you to ingest, but God is greater. He's greater. He's greater than any excuse that you could come up with as to why you're not building your relationship my god is greater our god is greater okay but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance which is um patience along suffering if you read a different version um love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and my favorite Self-control. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. I'm a, those are the fruits of the Spirit. This is how you know that you are living by the fruit of the Spirit. This is how you know you are pleasing our Father God. You have real love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and Self-control. We are lacking in self-control and in love and in peace and in gentleness and kindness in this world. It is lacking. Mm. Against such things, there is no law. You cannot put a law on love on joy, on peace, on kindness, faithfulness, forbearance, gentleness, self-control. You can't put a law on any of those things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and its desires. So like I told you, I, my flesh has been crucified, it's dead. I don't want no parts of it because living of the spirit as I live now, I feel divine. I feel set apart. I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel that I have a mission greater uh, than likes, posts, subscribers, followers. I don't want followers. I want people to follow Jesus. I really do. And I don't want you to do it by way of religion. I want you to pick up the word yourself. Pick it up yourself. Just like I had to go and find God myself and he had to show up physically for me. I want you to do the same thing. Be like, God, if you're real, I'm going to ask you this question because that's the thing. People are afraid to ask God like that. If you are coming with a pure heart and to restore your relationship with God and you ask a request unto God, and you ask with pure intentions, like, God, I want to get to know you again. So I'm going to ask you this question. How do I know that you're real? And you open the word and you find a scripture that's like, this is how you know I'm real. God will show up like that because he wants you to come home and live by the fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit to which God has left us when his son, Jesus Christ, died. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. 
Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. That took way longer than what I expected. Um, but I am really glad that I was able to share my testimony again. I will continue to share my testimony as many times as I need to. Um, I'm thinking maybe I'll go live a little bit more often on Facebook so that we can have these dialogues and so that we can talk. Or, I mean, in this case, I can just kind of like <laughs> talk to myself. <laughs> but I love you all. Have a happy Sunday. Have a great week. Understand that God is not looking for you to come to him perfect. That's when, because when we come as we are, we give God the opportunity to show up in our lives and show out. You understand what I'm telling you? In January of this year, so January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, every single one of those days, I was getting high as crap. I was smoking mm, about four blunts a day. I was linking up with people and smoking with them and I was smoking on my own and I was smoking in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. No desire for it. It's May. And I have been smoking like that. Like every day like that, like heavy like that since 2015. Yeah. Yep. I've been smoking like that since 2015. I know more. And I've had to, even like recently, like I've had to remove myself from people and situations. Um, again, not because I think that I'm better than them or not because I look down on them because they're smoking, but because that's where their walk is. And I, and I have to build myself up again and build myself so strong in the armor so that when I do go back around them, it's nothing for me to be like, nah, I'm good. Okay. So, and all glory be to God. It's God that did that. And that's what he wants. He wants you to come, he wants you to be so low so that when you, he builds you back up, you have no choice but to edify his name. You have no choice but to tell people it was nothing but the grace of God. It was nothing but the goodness of God. It was nothing but the Lord that got me to stop cursing. Like I used to, I used to do lives just a few months ago on here and not be able to get through one live without cussing. I just got through a whole entire live and I did not say one cuss word. <laughs> Even now when I have conversations with my friends, like, no, I don't cuss. So, yeah. I love you all. I'm praying for you all. If any of you ever need some guidance or some help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. The Everyday Ministry at gmail.com. Please reach out to me. I'm here for you. Like, this walk is not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to take you on an emotional roller coaster so that you can understand how you're on this emotional roller coaster, but God is constant. God doesn't change. Eventually, you'll get yourself off of that roller coaster and realize that God was right here the whole time. That's the purpose of this whole walk. So you can be all flailing all over the place. Blah, 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 and then you realize, wait a minute. God right here. Whole time. Okay. I love y'all. Take care. I'll see you soon. Peace.